So three, let's test and modify this LED headlamp from Aliexpress for five dollars. Just a quick video while working on this tube disaster. It's a three LED headlamp for some reason called headlight and it runs on an 18650 rechargeable battery lithium ion which goes into this space. There are nice sort of golden color springs or spring and a contact. Here you have the button, the USB charging port and these three LEDs. Let's put the battery into it. I have this tested one. You can also choose an option with the battery included. They say it's 2200 mAh but it can easily be 400 mAh. You know it. Let's put it in and test it. A high power mode. Low power mode for the center LED. This one is pulse width modulated. It creates bars in the camera, rolling shutter. And after several seconds, when the button is switched again, it actually goes immediately into the off mode instead of going through all the modes. Again, high, low, now these side LEDs and all LEDs and an annoying flashing mode. But if you wait for several seconds, the button goes straight to off. So you don't always have to go through all the modes, including the super annoying flashing mode to turn it off. And the USB port has this cover on it, which doesn't actually push in. There is no waterproofness. It's basically just flapping in the wind. But anyway, it's five dollars. Let's shine it against the wall and see the lighting pattern. The high brightness of the center LED, low brightness, now the side LEDs and all LEDs combined. And the weird thing is that the center LED and the side LEDs do virtually the same thing. The side LEDs are just a slightly wider beam but not much different. It has a very bright spot in the middle and a wide circle around it, the low brightness. And it's also odd how the center LED looks sort of bluish in the camera and the side LED is sort of greenish in the camera. But to me it actually seems virtually the same color. I guess the center LED has a better color rendering. The side LEDs have a horrible color rendering. And it really doesn't make much sense why there are two sources of light separately controlled which do almost the same. But there is also a version of it which has a very narrow beam LED here and wide beam LEDs here which don't have the parabolas. If you have two different groups of LEDs, you typically want them to do different things, either to be a narrow beam and a wide beam or to be two different colors like warm white and cool white or white and red. But I chose this one because I want to try to modify it. But before this let's do some measurements and take a look inside of it. The battery is about 90% full. Let's measure the current. The central LED uses about 400 milliamps, and in the low mode 120 milliamps. The side LED is 200 milliamps and all combined 560 something milliamps. And because these two combined draw about 200 milliamps, which is 100 milliamps per LED, I could use 150 milliamps for yellow LEDs for the replacement. But now of course let's open it to see if it's even possible to modify it and also what's inside of it. There are two screws. And after unscrewing the screws, if I push here, the inside basically just comes out and that's it. Here you can see the parabolas with the plexiglass. And this holder, battery holder, with the board on it and the LEDs. The USB charging port and the button. And some components under it. If somebody's interested in the detail of the LEDs, the center one and the side LED. The center LED actually seems smaller, but it's running at about 400 milliamps, and these are running at about 100 milliamps only each. And the traces going to this one are sort of twisted, instead of creating big pads, which would work as a heat sink. That's sort of stupid. What about using scissors? Then you can easily desolder it. One LED soldered in using a huge soldering gun that looks absolutely atrocious, but when I clean the rosin, way nicer. And these parabolas fit over it. It also has a long press for SOS mode, which nobody uses anyway. And there is a red LED for charging and a green LED for fully charged. But you probably want to see the other side of the board, so I desoldered it here and let's take a look. Here you can see the button and the charging indicator LEDs and their common resistor, the charging port. 
the charging controller chip and the protection transistor disconnecting the battery probably. And here's the mode chip and the two transistors switching the two sets of LEDs. And this 5.1 ohm resistor is for the side LEDs and this parallel combination of two such resistors is for the main LED. Which makes sense, a parallel combination of two resistors is half the resistance and twice the current, which is the case for the central LED. And here's its heatsink pad and a couple SMD capacitors, and a couple base resistors or gate resistors for the transistors, maybe some pull-down resistor. Of course the LED resistors could be changed to change the current, but I guess these resistors are appropriate for this LED and this one seems to be still appropriate for these ones. They're half a watt, 150 mA LEDs, and with a fully charged battery they will probably run at about 110-120 mA. And now the cool white and the yellow blend nicely into a warm white or neutral white light. And they also have a nice yellow mode. But now I noticed something very disappointing. In about two minutes it starts reducing the duty cycle. Is it overheating? All three LEDs do it. Now it's four minutes. You can see in the rolling shutter how the duty cycle is reduced. And 10 minutes. It seems to settle at less than 50% duty cycle, which is disappointing. What if I turn it off and back on? And now it's full duty cycle. I was thinking there is a temperature sensor in the chip, but this actually looks like it's a timer. It cannot be a temperature sensor if turning it off and back on immediately makes it go to the full duty cycle. It couldn't cool that fast. Let's try yellow only. And it actually does the same duty cycle reduction in the yellow mode, or say the LED mode, despite it's just one third of the combined power, which verifies it's not a temperature sensor, it's just a stupid timer. I've put it in a bloody freezer with the cover off, in the side LED mode only, and it still pulse with modulating. This again verifies it's not a temperature sensor, it's just a stupid timer. The board is cooler than the ambient now, so with a temperature sensor it would not do this. Of course if you have an oscilloscope you can visualize the pulse width modulation by connecting the oscilloscope to it, but you can also do it without opening it, just by aiming it at the solar cell and loading it with a resistor and measuring on this resistor with the oscilloscope. And it seems to be using 200 Hz for the pulse width modulation and the duty cycle stops reducing at 35%. The duty cycle for the center LED low mode is 30%. The horrible flashing mode is 7.8 Hz by the way. The yellow mode again keeps stepping the duty cycle down in 1% steps until it again stops at 35%. And the combined mode again after a while starts pulse width modulating the brightness and reducing it. This one stops at 25%. Is it actually necessary to reduce it that much? The hottest spot here, the central LED, is 35 degrees Celsius. And the ambient is about 22, so it's about 13 degree temperature rise. Of course it's going to get hotter in the housing, but it still seems a bit too conservative, doesn't it? And the power reduction of the main LED starts at 2 minutes exactly, and stops at 4 minutes 58 seconds, basically 5 minutes at 35%. So out of the initial 400 milliamps, we're left with 140 milliamps average current. And that's the average current, and times 3 volts, it's 0.42 watts flashlight basically. That's really bloody powerful, isn't it? With the battery at 4.1 volts, and it will further decline as it discharges. And the combined mode, 25% out of 570 milliamps, again leaves you with 140 milliamps, basically the same thing, and 0.42 watts. If I knew this I wouldn't probably even bother modifying it. So let's rectify the problem, literally. Here's the simplified schematic with the chip and the transistors, switching the LEDs, and after some time these outputs start pulse width modulating. So what if I just rectify them? What if I put diodes here? instead of the resistors, or I could put them in a series with the resistors, but there is not much space on the board. So these are now Schottky diodes. You could of course put some capacitors in parallel, but the thing is that MOSFET gates are already capacitors, so it's not necessary. And I could put some discharging resistor here, but the reverse leakage current of the Schottky is enough to turn it off after some time. So just a Schottky is enough to turn the pulse width modulated signal into a DC voltage on the gate. And of course this 10 kilo ohm resistor is discharging the gate too fast, so I'm deleting it. So it reduces just to the diodes. Then there was one problem, this transistor actually turned out to be NPN bipolar, not MOSFET. So I replaced it with a MOSFET, random N channel 1 from some random motherboard from scrap. 
the sensor LED. Of course, I've lost also the low mode in this modification, but whatever. This is the side LEDs, all flashing. It's just the DC now. The gate capacitance of the MOSFET is enough to smooth the 200 Hz pulsing, but not this 8 Hz flashing. But you can see it increased the duty cycle from about 50% to about 60. And now it actually is sort of temperature regulated because the reverse leakage current of Schottky diodes goes up exponentially with the temperature. At room temperature their reverse leakage current is just a couple microamps or less than a microamp. But when they are hot it gets much higher. So when the board is bloody hot it will still pulse with modulate and reduce the brightness. Now it's actually limiting the power using the reverse leakage current of the Schottky diodes. Limiting to 64% duty cycle. And let's try to blow on it. And it's full duty cycle, 100%. Nice! That's an amazing temperature control, isn't it? Now it's hot again, the side LEDs are 52 degrees Celsius and 58. The center LED, 66 degrees Celsius. That's really not that bad, is it? Just for fun, let's add a 10 nano capacitor here. So when it's hot, it's only reducing the center LED. Of course, everybody wants to see the horrible SMD botch disaster. Then using this and a bucket of rosin, but after cleaning it using a bucket of alcohol. Now it looks super nice, doesn't it? And if it doesn't, I don't care. What if I gave it a heat sink? This is copper plated with something. Now the heat sink is in place and I guess this kind of procedure is called polishing a third, but... Now the main LED is 52 degrees. So now it's finally actually usable and this was supposed to be a quick video. Just measure the operating current, show the internals and swap the two LEDs. But it's also a psychology lesson. Once you've put some effort into something, you are willing to put even more effort into it, even if it makes no rational sense. But anyway, I started to like this flashlight or headlamp. And that's again psychology. You can only appreciate something if it costs you a significant effort. On the other hand, if you come across something completely effortlessly, even if it's something nice, you just trash it instead of putting more effort into it when needed. So that's it, and if you like my videos, please consider subscribing, supporting my channel on Patreon and using the thanks button, based on the value you received from my videos. And big thanks to all of you who already support me. And I wish you a happy new year.